The Directive Principles of State Policy DPSP, are mentioned in Part 4 of the Constitution of India. So the answer is C. Part 1 of the Constitution deals with the preamble, fundamental rights, and citizenship. Part 7 deals with the judiciary. Part 8 deals with emergency provisions. The DPSP are a set of guidelines or principles that the state is supposed to follow in order to promote the welfare of the people and establish a just social order. They are not enforceable by the courts, but they are nevertheless important in shaping the policies and laws of the country. The DPSP were adopted from the Constitution of Ireland, which was drafted by the same committee that drafted the Indian Constitution. The Irish Constitution also has a set of non-justiciable directive principles of state policy. The DPSP are divided into 15 principles, which are, 1. To secure a social order for the promotion of the welfare of the people. 2. To provide for the citizens, men and women equally, the right to an adequate means of livelihood. 3. To secure the ownership and control of the material resources of the community for the common good. 4. To prevent the concentration of wealth and means of production to the common detriment. 5. To ensure that the operation of the economic system does not result in the concentration of wealth and means of production to the common detriment. 6. To separate the judiciary from the executive in the public services of the state. 7. To provide for free and compulsory education for all children until they complete the age of 14 years. 8. To raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living of the people and to improve public health. 9. To secure just and humane conditions of work and maternity relief. 10. To protect the health and strength of workers, men and women, and to safeguard the tender age of children. 11. To raise the status of women and to improve their social and economic position. 12. To secure the right of all citizens to work to education and to public assistance in cases of unemployment, old age, sickness and disablement, and in other cases of undeserved want. 13. To make provision for securing just and humane conditions of work and for maternity relief. 14. To take steps to separate the judiciary from the executive in the public services of the state. 15. To promote cottage industries on an individual or cooperative basis in rural areas. The DPSP have been criticized for being vague and idealistic, and for not being enforceable by the courts. However, they have also been praised for providing a framework for the government to promote the welfare of the people and establish a just social order. The promotion of education and economic interests of weaker sections of the society, especially the SC and ST comes under Directive Principles of State Policy, DPSP. So the answer is, C. Fundamental rights are the basic rights that are guaranteed to all citizens of India. They are enforceable by the courts. Fundamental duties are the duties that are expected of all citizens of India. They are not enforceable by the courts. The fifth schedule is a part of the constitution that deals with the administration of tribal areas in India. Article 46 of the Constitution of India states that the state shall promote, with special care, the education and economic interests of the weaker sections of the people, and, in particular of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, and shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. This is a directive principle of state policy, which means that it is not enforceable by the courts, but it is nevertheless important in shaping the policies and laws of the country. The government has implemented a number of schemes and programs to promote the education and economic interests of the weaker sections of the society, especially the SC and Saint. These include schemes for free and compulsory education, reservation in education and employment, and financial assistance for setting up businesses. The government has also enacted a number of laws to protect the rights of the weaker sections of the society, such as the Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes, Prevention of Atrocities, Act, 1989. These measures have helped to improve the lives of the weaker sections of the society, but there is still a lot more that needs to be done. The government needs to continue to invest in education and economic development for these communities, and it needs to ensure that they are protected from discrimination and exploitation.
the statement that is not correct about the directive principles of state policy is b it is the duty of the state to apply the dpsp principles in making laws not the citizens the other statements are all correct here are the correct statements about the directive principles of state policy they are a set of guidelines or principles that the state is supposed to follow in order to promote the welfare of the people and establish a just social order they are not enforceable by the courts but they are nevertheless important in shaping the policies and laws of the country they were adopted from the constitution of ireland which was drafted by the same committee that drafted the indian constitution they are divided into 15 principles which are listed in article 36 to 51 of the constitution some of the important dpsps include the right to an adequate means of livelihood the right to education the right to work the right to social security and the right to a healthy environment the statement that the citizens have a duty to apply the dpsp principles in making laws is incorrect because the dpsps are addressed to the state not the citizens the state has a duty to apply the dpsp principles in making laws but the citizens do not have a specific duty to do so the dpsps are important because they provide a framework for the government to promote the welfare of the people and establish a just social order they are not enforceable by the courts but they are nevertheless important in shaping the policies and laws of the country the answer is b the directive principles of state policy are not divided into liberal intellectual directives they are divided into three categories socialistic directives these directives aim to establish a socialist society in india they include the principles of secularism equality social justice and the welfare state gandhi directives these directives are based on the principles of mahatma gandhi they include the principles of non violence self reliance and simplicity liberal directives these directives aim to protect individual rights and freedoms they include the principles of freedom of speech freedom of religion and freedom of association so the answer is b liberal intellectual directives is not a category of directive principles of state policy The current vice president of India is Jagdeep Dhankar. He was elected in August 2022 and took office on the 11th of August 2022. He is a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP) and has served as the governor of West Bengal from 2019 to 2022. Not correct as D. ministers do not hold office during the pleasure of the president they hold office during the pleasure of the lok sabha this means that the lok sabha can remove the ministers by passing a no confidence motion the other statements are all correct the prime minister is appointed by the president but only after the president has been advised by the elected members of the lok sabha the council of ministers are appointed by the prime minister but only from among the members of the lok sabha or the rajya sabha The Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. This means that the entire Council of Ministers must resign if the Lok Sabha passes a no confidence motion. So the answer is D. Ministers do not hold office during the pleasure of the president. They hold office during the pleasure of the Lok Sabha. The chancellor for all the universities in the state is the governor of the state. So the answer is B. The governor is the constitutional head of the state and is responsible for the administration of the state. He, she is also the chancellor of all the universities in the state. The governor appoints the vice chancellor of the university on the advice of the state government. The chief minister is the head of the state government and is responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of the state. he she does not have any role in the appointment of the chancellor of the university the education minister is responsible for the education policy of the state he she does not have any role in the appointment of the chancellor of the university the high court chief justice is the head of the judiciary in the state he she does not have any role in the appointment of the chancellor of the university
the minimum age limit to contest for Lok Sabha elections is 25 years. So the answer is, A. The minimum age limit to contest for any election in India is 25 years. This is stipulated in Article 84, B, of the Constitution of India. The article states that a person shall be qualified to be elected as a member of the Lok Sabha if he, she is a citizen of India, not less than 25 years of age, and is a registered voter in any constituency in India. There are a few other qualifications that a person must meet in order to contest for Lok Sabha elections. These include being a resident of India for at least five years, and being able to read, write, and speak in any language used in the constitution. The minimum age limit for Rajya Sabha elections is 30 years. The minimum age requirement for Rajya Sabha candidates is 30 years, regardless of whether they are elected by the people or nominated by the president. So the answer is, A. Article 84 of the Constitution of India states that a person shall be qualified to be elected as a member of the Rajya Sabha if he, she is a citizen of India, not less than 30 years of age, and is a qualified elector for the election of the members of the House of the People in any state. The minimum age requirement for Lok Sabha candidates is 25 years. This is because the Lok Sabha is the lower house of the Parliament of India, and it is generally considered to be the more representative body. The Rajya Sabha is the upper house of the parliament, and it is made up of members who are nominated by the state governments and by the president. There are a few other qualifications that a person must meet in order to contest for Rajya Sabha elections. These include being a resident of India for at least 10 years, and being able to read, write, and speak in any language used in the constitution. The current Lok Sabha speaker is Om Birla. He is a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, and has been the member of parliament, MP, from Rajasthan's Kota Bundi constituency since 2014. He was elected speaker of the Lok Sabha on the 17th of June 2019. The other options are incorrect. Sri Birla is a generic honorific title used in India for men. Birla is a surname that is common in India. G.D. Birla is a businessman and philanthropist who was the chairman of the Aditya Birla group. He is not the current Lok Sabha speaker. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any other questions.